Welcome everybody, how you doing? I am Chris Kiefer, welcome to RacerXOnline.com and another 2022 New Bike Edition Special. You're looking at the 22 Husqvarna FC 450. Not a lot of change points for 2022. If you go back to the 2021 test, you can see all of the changes that Husqvarna made, but not a ton to talk about here in this intro. So we're gonna grab two other opinions from a Vet B guy, as well as an older vet pro and myself, we're gonna talk about why the Husqvarna is different on the track um, from the orange version and the red version. The red version meaning the gas gas, not the Honda. So just a couple quick things for you guys that are new to this, this bike. Subframe, handlebars, swing arm, and muffler are different from the red and orange bikes. So we're gonna talk about that. Do you feel that on the track? We'll discuss that and why maybe you should purchase a Husqvarna over a KTM or Gas Gas. So we're gonna wrap this thing up here in a little bit, but in the meantime, check out some action from the hills of Glen Helen. We'll be right back to talk about this machine. To the right of me, Gary Sutherland, 2017 AMA National Hare and Hound Champion and Works Champion the same year. That's a very impressive year by Gary. Uh, I mentioned this earlier. No one has done that since Kurt Caselli, so uh, quite an accomplishment. If I was Gary, I would hang on to that for a very, very long time, and I would use that everywhere I go. But I Gary doesn't you. really talk about it. He's very humble. He's loud. He's loud humble is what I would say. So... He currently has a 2021 KTM 450 XCF, yep. correct? And I thought he would be a good guy to compare why uh, or where the Husky feels different. I'm going to use the word Husky, so forgive me. Uh, where it feels different than the KTM. So, just from my point of view, I'm going to give you mine if you guys even care. Overall, I think this engine character is a smoother, broader power. Um, I feel like this thing has a little bit more top end than the KTM. It revs out a little bit farther, but doesn't have the front side, that excitement that the KTM has. I will say, notably, this thing has less vibration than the KTM. I think that has something to do with these bars right here and the composite subframe. Also, the swing arm is a softer feel on the track. I don't know what Gary's about to say, but I'm gonna tell you my feelings. Um, overall, on the track, bump absorption, is a little bit more compliant. I am not a huge fan of the 10 millimeter lower suspension that comes on the Husky. Gary and I were talking about this before we started here. It is the same valving spec, same spring rate as a KTM 450 SXF, but just 10 millimeters lower on each end. So the shock and the fork drops down. For you, you know, vertically challenged guys out there, I think that would be a great benefit. But for me, I'm six foot. Gary's five. Five nine. Five nine give you his opinion in a minute, but for me, I prefer just a little bit taller feel. Now, Gary, been on KTMs a long time. You rode for KTM. Yep. Had some time on Huskies before a little bit. Mm -hmm. Hopping on this thing, obviously, first things first, engine feeling for you. Uh, over the KTM, I definitely think the Husky is definitely a lot smoother. Um, I get, like, with the KTM, I get that, like, sneaky fast, like, where it's like, oh, all of a sudden I have all this power. Whereas this, I feel like I can actually ride this a little harder. Like I can be a little more aggressive with the throttle. I tried map one and it was a little too- Too smooth? Yeah, just too linear for like, um, even though Glen Helen today is like slick and a little uh, little wet, I, I, I like the map two. I, I feel like acceleration out of corners, like it, it got going a lot better with map two. And In the testing world, Gary, we call that recovery. Recovery, okay, recovery. It recovers better in map two. There you go. Um, so you prefer the KTM engine over the Husqvarna? 
Yeah, so far, I, I, f I feel like I could pull a higher gear with the, with the KTM over the Husky. Like I could roll third, being as heavy as I am, I could roll third in corners that I couldn't on this. Um, so that's where I kind of lean in a little bit more towards that engine package or the way that it hits um, over over the Husky. So the chassis feeling for me, um, there is a benefit to this 10 millimeter lower suspension feeling. You see my hand here. When you guys tip into a corner, side to side movement, for me, it's easier to use this machine in those situations. So area one of the corner, the initial lean, for me, this bike corners a little bit better in area one than the KTM or Gas Gas. I like that feeling. Notably as well, straight line stability, I feel like it's a little bit better than the KTM. And I would have thought being a little bit lower that I get a little bit more of a twitchy feel, a little bit more unstable feeling, but for me it feels planted. More tire contact patch and, and better planted to the ground. So I like that feeling. Again, vibration is down. So overall, I prefer this chassis over the KTM chassis. Now, I the first thing I noticed when I jumped on this today was uh, coming into a corner, I could change directions easy. Like, I could go outside in, I could put the bike where I wanted it. Where KTM, like, I kind of have to set in and I pick my line and I just roll through it. Whereas this, like, I come in and I'm like, oh, the front end, it, like, steers. It wants to steer in and I can get to that inside if I want to. Or I can go outside and square it out of it. And I really like that. Uh, as far as stability and I feel like the, the whole chassis, like, it just, being the, the little bit lower that it is, it, I get more feedback. Like, Bind, I, like binding feeling? Yeah, just it's like more of just I, I can't pinpoint exactly. It's just a it's just more of an aggressive feel in the bar. Like the whole bike just feels a little more dead. It doesn't feel like the KTM I can like pop around a little bit where this kind of feels like it's just hammering through stuff. Which is I get the stability. Kind of how you ride anyway. Yeah, I, I agree with that, and I think I've, I play I've been playing around with the clickers a little bit, and I opened it up, and it got better. Um, but I just wasn't a hundred percent. Confident. Confident with it coming in, like, coming into the corner. I felt like it had just a little too much. Whereas, uh, so it's a give or take. I like the way it corners better than the KTM. Like, I, my cornering was way better, which on a motorcycle. Which you need help with. <laughs> have my foot out like this, you know. But, no, I think, give or take, I think, playing around with it, I think it's hard. I, I like the cornering of this, but I like the movement of the KTM. Right, don't hurt yourself. We're just, we're, we're, we're still building to the climax of this whole video here. So. Suspension feel, uh, again, lower feeling is uh, not the best for me. Again, like Gary and I said, cornering is a little bit better. We've talked about this before we started this video. A little bit harsher feeling for me. It is soft. Um, again, we're working with the air fork. We don't have to beat this to death. There's not a lot of lean angle comfort with an AER fork. Out of all the air forks that I've tried over the years, these are the best. I can live with it. Do I prefer it? No. But for me... Make sure when you guys get your new Husqvarna, you break them in six hours. It takes a long time. WP stuff takes longer than KYB or Showa. So I'm 172 pounds. Gary's going to name his weight here in a little bit, so bear with me. Um, but for me, I just still think it's a little bit too soft. Two bills. 200, 200 pounds. So, uh, and I, I, on the other hand, I like my stuff a little softer. Whether I'm riding motocross, whatever it is that I'm riding, I like that comfort feel. So... I always choose a little bit of a softer setting. So I wouldn't say necessarily for me it was too soft. I think I need a different spring for sure in the rear. Um, valving wise. I different spring as in stiffer? Yes. Yes. I think I'd go with this little stiffer like uh, spring in the rear. I feel like the rebound is a little too, like I'm packing a little bit. Like I feel like I opened it up front and rear and it helped. So I don't know if, if I was to change it. I think that's where I would not necessarily compression. I think it's stiff enough for even my weight. It, uh, Which is a benefit to the air fork is that you yeah. can do that. Yeah, you can. There's adjust. There's a lot of adjustability. I think you throw a shock spring on this for your weight, and you can play around with it. I think it's pretty, pretty. No, we call that in the testing world, Gary. We call that? Track toughness. Track toughness. The air fork has a lot that? of track toughness. I, don't think you I have personally that. don't have that, but the bike does. Uh, we're going to talk about ergonomics. Gary had a lot to say about this. I don't have as much as to say as Gary, I do feel like it's similar to a KTM feeling for me and Gas Gas. The Gas Gas bar is a little bit wider feeling, obviously different clamps. Uh, but I'm a big Pro Taper fan. Lots of uh, dampening feel, uh, less vibration, so I'm glad that uh, Husky went to a Pro Taper bar. But Gary, you mentioned something to me that I thought was pretty uh, 
I haven't heard in a while. So uh, rip down the difference between your KTM and this. I felt uh, first impression. I jumped on. I started riding it, and I know the bar. Uh, the bar's low, like which you would think for a shorter guy. I'm not a huge fan of a lower bar. Uh, the KTM's low bend too. Yeah, and, but even with back to back, I felt like on this bike I sat more on top of the bike than in the KTM. I felt like I kind of I there's a little pocket. I felt like I sat in a little bit better. Like, so does that make you feel on the KTM a little bit less of a low bend because you're in the seat a little bit, and this is a little bit of a lower feel up here because now you're on top. Yeah, and I don't know if maybe it's just the seat. The seat is, you know, maybe a little stiffer than the KTM one. I'm not sure. Um, but I just felt like in the corners, like, I felt like I was sitting on top of the bike a little bit more than the KTM, um, which was odd to me because I've rode both, and I haven't ever had that feeling, but I just rode the KTM and jumped on this, and it was like, that was the first thing I noticed. Uh, a couple things you guys can upgrade that I noticed What we talk about on uh, other Austrian brands is clamps you can go to what i call i still call it the hard part clamp but they call it something different now factory edition clamp or rockstar edition clamp whatever it is uh, it's a split clamp more comfort a little bit less uh, rigidity you will get some more lean angle traction with those clamps still with the aer fork i would i would love to put this swing arm on a ktm to see what it does and i may do that just for uh for you know what and giggles maybe um so for me Overall, I do like this bike. My wife purchased one for me a couple years ago, so that's how much I did like it, and I enjoyed my time on it. Um, anything else that you want to point out? Brakes, anything, tires, gearing? Let's talk about gearing. Yeah, no, I was going to actually bring that up. I, uh, I'm still, I don't think we've tied it down. I'm running 1450 on my XCF, and we're running 1349 on this, and I prefer the 1450. Uh, just longer gear. I did confirm same transmission. Same transmission. And I can't figure it out because I'm 1450 on XCF and 1349 here, but I can run third more on my KTM. And I don't know if that has to do with just throttle response and that engine, the, the way it ramps up, or what that exactly is. But I, I've I've found out that I like the 14 counter so like as far as gearing and as far as pulling gears. I can You can rev it if you want, but it still has that... I can get on it and the traction's there. Like it Enough pulls, torque. Yeah, it pulls that higher gearing, keeps the bike settled and more planted feeling in the corners. Uh, if you go to keyforingtesting.com, there is some tips for chassis feel. If you guys want some of that, chain slack, uh, pivot bolt to axle measurements. Uh, I worked on some of that, so that is up there. Uh, but overall, very fun bike. For you shorter guys, I think you would prefer this. If you're worried about having too much power, uh, maybe you're like, hey man, I haven't ridden in a while. It's been 10, 15 years, I'm 200 plus pounds. I don't want a 450. I don't want all that power. It's pretty mellow power. Like, you have enough there. It's 450. You'll know that once you ride it. But it's not explosive. Easy to ride. I'm going to grab uh, Matt Servog right now. He comes from a 350 background, so uh, we're going to talk to him right now. All right. Matt Servog, mid-30s, 30, plus 35B rider, 297 pounds. Pretty close. Pretty close nowadays. What is it? 207-ish. Oh, you're fine. 207 is fine. Uh, it looks more because the chesty he has on, uh, but you guys know him as Vaj. That's what I call him. Uh, blue collar guy, hardworking guy. He's ditching work right now, so shh. So we're not going to talk about that. I don't think his bosses watch this show. No. So uh, nope. coming from the KTM 350, you purchased one. You've been in the KTM 350 video. You had a 450. I did. And you got back on one today. I did. Yeah. And uh, so break it down. Did you? Like or dislike riding this bike? At first, I disliked it. It uh, has a lot of power. Yeah. And it took a little getting used to of uh, Spencer here's nose, over jumping almost every jump first couple laps. We call uh, Matt uh, Stiffy. This is what me and Spencer call Matt, because he's a little bit stiff in the air. So it's windy today here at Glen Helen, and we were worried about him blowing off the side of the truck. He's so stiff, like a kite, he just might just take off. That is true. The wind says go left, I'm going left, so. Uh, real quick about the, the power. You say there's a lot of power, but I kind of mentioned with Gary, is it controllable? So when it comes to a 450, it's very controllable. If I was to get back on a 450, then this would be the bike I ride because you can manage it. And uh, one of my keys to stardom here is when I'm getting tired or even when I'm not feeling it is traction control. I rode traction control most of the day today. Map one or map two? 
map one. I like that little linear pull and it revs a little farther, kind of like a 350, and then traction control so it's not ripping my arms out. So, uh, great point. So the gas gas does not come with this uh, handlebar mounted map switch. Uh, you can buy it, obviously, aftermarket, but that is something to be noted. Like if you are like Matt, maybe scared a little bit about 450 power, you get arm pump because he does get a lot of that. And having TC does help. It helps a lot, um, especially in my corners. When I exit corners and they start getting rough, I'll tend to get a little whiskey and grab a handful where the traction control kind of mellows it out and it's more of an easy pull out of the corner and I get better drive. Uh, we talked about chassis and how well this thing corners with the 10 millimeter lower suspension. Uh, being that you're 207, how is the stock stuff? And you, just for everyone here today, we did leave uh, the air pressure stock. We did mess around with it. You can go to keyforinktesting.com and look at some uh, baseline settings that we'll have up there for my weight, uh, Matt's weight, and it'll be kind of, we'll meet in the middle. Uh, so a good baseline setting there. But what do you think overall, one of the air fork, and two, just the overall feeling of the bike on the track? So the air fork I like, um, I kept whatever air pressure Gary had. So we are going off of someone who's definitely a lot faster than I am. Uh, I had a little compliancy, but at the same time, it kind of ramped up a little harsh. So me not knowing better, I'm not sure if it was stiff or soft. Uh, rear shock, it really, the acceleration chop, it really soaked it up. But when I hit some big G outs and my fat butt was on the seat, it would definitely blow through all the way through the stroke with me on it. I always thought um, WP in general on their shocks, high speed dampening is a little empty. And when I say empty, that means just soft. Like you have dampening, dampening, all of a sudden it's just too free and it just kind of slams at the end. So going a little bit in on your high speed on this bike really does help. Just for you guys at home, keep a note, it's 10.8 is where we started. Stock is 10.7 bar on the fork. So we did go up a little bit because I know I'm dealing with some, some beef here today, right? So uh, we did go up a little bit. Um, how do you corner? Because this is me and you talking a lot about cornering, getting your foot out, get your foot back on the peg. Laying in the corner, how do you feel on this bike? So entry of the corner, it feels a little heavy. Like the heavy as in how? Like tip in? Like on tip in and almost like the engine's giving a little bit of a heavy feel entering the corner. And then, but after you initiate that lean, the bike automatically just feels light, you know, going into the uh, middle. Area two, area three. Area two, area three exit, the bike feels light. So it took an adjustment coming from the 350 that initial tip in. Once I got past the tip in and learned to, hey, give it a little more body English coming into the corner, then it, it handled really well. 350 to 450 weight difference, very minimal, maybe one to two pounds, but uh, 350 does have a less inertia, so it does feel lighter. One thing I want to mention is engine braking. If you guys are comparing 450, so in the world of engine braking, and I don't know, maybe that's what you feel, I do feel like this bike has a little less engine braking than the KTM. KTM has more to me. So this thing has a little bit of freer feel. So compared to your 350, do you notice the engine braking on this? I did notice that, and I was able to use that engine braking to slow me down coming into corners. Where on my 350, I'm a lot harder on the brakes coming into the corner. So overall, if you're going to pick a 450, this would be it. Oh, yeah, this would be it. You know, I've, I've come to terms knowing that I'm not quite man enough or fit enough for a 450. I love 450s for a couple laps, but once you get past that, they're just, it's hard to manage. But the Husky is, the power is so linear and broad that you can really have fun with it even when you're tired, and it's light. So you can really lay it over and kind of maneuver around the track and kind of hop little bumps, which is quite nice. Uh, it does feel pretty light. It, as a, Like I said, mid to top end power, mid RPM response is very active and very responsive, so I do like that part of it. Ergonomically, it's a little bit wider in the shrouds for me. Do you notice that coming off of your KTM? I didn't notice that at all. As soon as I got on this, it felt very similar to my 350. So I didn't notice it any wider. Or even the whole rider triangle felt very similar. So uh, We don't talk about Dunlops often on bike tests, but they do come with MX-33s. The optimal pressure is 12.5 to 13 PSI. Uh, Dunlop 33s have a stiffer carcass. So if you're coming from a 3S, or if you get a 3S, if you're lucky enough to find one, run that at 13.5. You probably will not find a 3S rear, but there are fronts available. That's my recommendation, going to a 3S F front. I like that. Um, but overall, we're going to keep riding this thing. We're going to do 450 shootouts, like I mentioned. Uh, 450 shootouts this year will be a little bit different. Uh, we're going to try 
full muffler systems, revalve suspension, and uh, handlebars, grips, and gearing if needed. All these bikes that we're going to try are going to have all of that done to it. And just try to have a little bit of fun, do something different, so you can look for that over on racerxonline.com at the end of the year. And of course, if you guys have any questions about this bike, we didn't cover it here. Chances are maybe that uh, I did, because uh, I do screw up from time to time. Uh, Chris at keyforinktesting.com is that email, and I'm happy to answer those for you. Um, thank you, Matt. Thank you to Gary. Don't forget, 12 issues, 30 bucks. Get something free. Vaj just got a free pair of Ethica underwear. I don't think that's happening again right now, but there is other things right now that you can subscribe to. 30 bucks. Get something free. Who doesn't love something free, right? Great publication. And, of course, racerxonline.com for more information on all bike tests and uh, lots of other things that are cool, like going to Ethica. There was an Ethica video just out right now. You can go to racerxonline.com and check that out. See you guys later.